if you're if you're young boys and girls, men and women, different religions, extremely diverse office. Our office looks like uh, looks like the rest of the country, and um, and so what I what I tell girls and boys is to set the bar high. Um, you know, we need your best. Uh, so. Um, dream big, uh, keep going toward it, and only listen to the people that tell you that you can. Um, you know, I, I, I'm here to tell you there are people along my path that said there's no way you're ever going to be able to do that. Nobody ever gets selected to be an astronaut. And, you know, somebody did, did right? <laughs> so um, there, there is that chance, but uh, it, it, you have to choose to go for that chance. And you have to choose to go through it for it. And Jessica said it best, go do something that you're really passionate about because you're going to be better at it and you're going to enjoy it more. And one of the cool things that makes our job so much more interesting and so much more filling and I think makes us so much more successful is the fact that we have that diversity mm -hmm. now. You know, if you had a group of people on the space station and they all looked and had exactly the same backgrounds, it really wouldn't be a very dynamic place because you'd probably have only one way of solving a problem. Instead, if you're met with a challenge but you have six different viewpoints, six different experience bases, that is the best way to solve a problem and to do that successfully and to make it much more interesting. So the Diversity adds so much and there are countless studies on the earth that really do show that you know you have much more successful and much more productive and much happier cohorts and teams on the ground when you have that diversity and inclusion hmm. yeah really well put somebody asked um, about space junk um, and you know we we're in orbit about 250 feet feet <laughs> a lot more than that 250 miles above the uh, surface of the earth and we are not the only thing in orbit. Um, there unfortunately is uh, a lot of things out there. Some of them are natural, like small rocks and micrometeoroids. And then some of them are man-made, like if a satellite blows up or if two satellites collide, that, that uh, debris can stay in orbit for quite a long time. So uh, first and most importantly is I think that we have to approach space exploration from a very um, responsible standpoint. Uh, we cannot mm -hmm. put up uh, items that we cannot uh, control and bring back and have a safe disposal plan for. On the International Space Station, we actually get hit uh, by micrometeoroids uh, quite often, uh, and our ground uh, ground teams can track larger objects. And if a larger object is identified, we will reboost the space station, which basically just means putting on one of our uh, thrusters and and changing the altitude of the space station to avoid debris. And then we have a special coat coating or covering on the front of the International Space Station uh, just for that. But um, uh, to absorb some of those hits. And when we're out on, on EVAs, on spacewalks, um, sometimes you can see it. it looks like a rock chip on your window. Um, you can see them on handrails and everything. So it is a very important problem and, um, and most importantly is being responsible as we continue to launch more things into space. Yeah, I think that's a great point, especially to think about today on Earth Day. We need to think about our planet and how to preserve our planet for the generations to come. But especially as space explorers, we need to continue to explore space in a sustainable way and as good stewards of all of those other planetary bodies as well. We need to make sure that we preserve those and do it in a way which we are not contaminating surfaces, we are not leading to the of other planetary bodies as well and that's something that I think that we do keep in mind for all of our future exploration strategies. Yeah so there's a question about the view from the space station and so why can't you see stars a lot of times from the International Space Station so Jessica maybe since you just got back so it's really fresh in your mind a week ago you were looking out the cupola at the earth sometimes during day sometimes right. at night uh, you want to talk about some of the stars and maybe storms and things you can see yeah so this is kind of I think a little bit of a myth that I've heard several times that people think that we can't necessarily see stars from the space station and I actually spent a lot of time stargazing and even taking some photos when you are in darkness you can see all of the stars you can see the Milky Way you can see constellations you can see planets you can see all of that. If you think about it, on the space station, we're only about 250 miles further out into space than you are on the surface of the Earth. Those th things still look pretty similar. We actually have a better view of the moon because it's not obscured by the atmosphere, so it looks more clear, but again, you're not really that much closer to it than you are on the surface of the Earth. So things do look a little bit different, and I think even some astronauts spend a lot of time only looking at the Earth when they're looking at the window, and they're only looking out the window when the Earth is illuminated. So you can see, you know, the Earth all lit up. You can see all the continents and land masses quite easily. But I actually liked going in and the night passes just as much because the night sky is phenomenal and the atmosphere appears. You have this orange air glow and the atmosphere looks even thicker than it does when it's blue during the day. And you can see it actually gradually 
fade out into nothingness and then you can see some of the stars behind that orange air glow. You can see the aurora in mm -hmm. many cases. I saw the northern lights and the southern lights many times and you have this green glow kind of dancing all around you and it is really just an extraordinary yeah, view. That's definitely a crew favorite. I remember, uh, you know, there's the, the cupola is in a, in a module called Node 3 and if anybody floated into node three and came down and saw the cupola i mean it was like alert the whole crew everybody float down to the cupola and take a look at it i remember one of the things that struck me early on was how fast the sun and the moon seem to move right like we have a sunrise and a sunset yeah, every 45 minutes up on space station and i mean it's like it's like the earth or the moon jumps off the horizon and moves so fast and i remember one of the, when i first got back to earth within the first couple of weeks i was sitting there watching the moon come up and and it actually kind of was funny that I was looking at the moon and then I turned and did something else and 15 minutes later I looked and it didn't look like the moon had moved at all. And I remembered, <laughs> oh, I expected it to be, you know, all the way up there now. Yeah, that's a great point. I remember the first time I went to take a picture of the moon, you know, I'm getting my camera ready and I'm getting all the settings adjusted and then it's gone out Did of view it, uh, already because it's moving so fast. Yeah, and actually, so one of the things, the earth is moving really fast too, and I'm from Spokane, Washington, and so of course I, everybody wants to get a picture of where they're from. It's like visiting home, uh, the ultimate visiting home, right? Um, and, and so I grabbed a camera and I was like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna come up on the side of Washington State. I'm gonna be able to see Seattle, Puget Sound, and then I'm gonna go a little bit in. Yeah, I even thought maybe I could follow I-90, the highway over. And I go to start taking a picture and I'm taking pictures, taking pictures. And my crewmate, Alex, that had been there for a while, he comes in, he's really good at earth pictures. And he said, what are you taking a picture of? And I said, Spokane, Washington. And he said, is it that in Minnesota? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, we're halfway across. You're going to have to be quicker than that. Um, but I saw somebody asked, what, what did you see from space that you really want to go and visit? And for me, that was the Great Lakes, actually. Um, the Great Lakes were so beautiful. I still, uh, I've been there one time now since I've been back, um, but I want to explore a little bit more, uh, on the, especially the northern parts of the Great Lakes. They were so beautiful to photograph uh, from space, and they're so huge. Yeah. I mean, I did not have an appreciation just for how big the Great Lakes are. So for those of you that live in that area, I think you're very lucky. Yeah, they really are gorgeous. I loved flying over the Patagonia ice field. That's actually already was on my must-go-to list. I've never been there before, but I spent a lot of time photographing those glaciers. And another Earth Day point there, that's something that we've done over many years now on the space station. We actually are using those pictures that we take from the space station of the glaciers to help monitor their their retreat and spe specifically in those Patagonia ice fields and they are so beautiful to look down on from above uh, I'd say another favorite spot of mine is you know flying over many of the different deserts in Africa and also in Saudi Arabia you see all these different colors and different textures of all the different sand dunes and just imagining what it would be like to see those from the eye level as well. One of the really cool things about the perspective we have on the space station is the geographical context that you're seeing things in, in the geological context. You're looking down on something and you can, for example, so easily see that this was an area of former volcanic activity because you can see the old volcano, you can see the crater, and you can see the big lava flow around. But if you were down there on Earth, you actually might be standing in the middle of it and not realize it because it's stretching to mm. such a far extent. It's really interesting to see that kind of geological phenomenon from, from on board. All right, so it looks like we only have one more minute. So I have a question because I'd love to get your closing thought on for this Earth Day. And I remember right after I came back, I was just in awe of um, landing this little space vehicle in the middle of Kazakhstan, seeing teams from all over the world get me safely back to Houston. Um, what's your message for coming back to Earth on this Earth Day? You're, you're our most recent visitor from outer space. Uh, so w what do you think on this Earth Day? Well, I think that everybody, if everybody could just take one moment to appreciate how extraordinary our planet is and to think of one thing that they can do in order to try and preserve this planet for the generations to come. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is up to all of us to take action and maybe that action is a very small one. Maybe it's using less plastic, maybe it's recycling, maybe it's eating more sustainable food sources. Even one thing that you can do when we do that on a global scale, it really can have some extraordinary consequences. Yeah, so we're all in it together, huh? We are absolutely all in it together. Right. I think that's the, the number one thing for us to realize. All right. Well, now this scientist and this test pilot have to figure out how to get off of live Instagram. How long do you think that's going to take us to figure out? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think I got this. I think I got this. I somebody want to type us? Somebody want to type us some instructions? Thank you, everybody. It was great checking in with all of you today. We appreciate the great questions and stay tuned on at NASA and our other social media accounts for more. Thank you. Take care, everybody.